Hi there. Light is an electromagnetic radiation. It's part of the electromagnetic radiations that make up the electromagnetic spectrum. Its sizes range from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Light is a very small particle. However, one thing you should know about light is that it's that type of electromagnetic radiation that is able to be understood by our brains. This is Z Online School. In this video, you and I are going to look at an introduction to light. We're going to do this in a systematic way. We're first going to look at sources of light, transparency, translucency and opacity, rays and beams, and at the end of this video are some bonus tips. So make sure you watch this video till the end for you to get the maximum value out of it. Let's talk about sources of light. There are basically two kinds of sources of light. In this video, we've decided to divide them as natural sources of light and artificial sources of light. Natural sources of light are just those kind of sources of light that are there just naturally. No one makes them. They are not related to man making that light. They just happen in nature. For example, you've got the sun, the stars, lightning, and the moon. These four are some examples of natural sources of light. As you can see, no one really makes the sun emit its light. No one makes the stars have light. The same applies to lightning and the moon. Now, if we take a look at artificial sources of light, which are those sources of light that are man-made, we can see that all of the artificial sources of light are made. Apart from the candle here, we can see that the rest of the artificial sources of light really need something dealing with electricity. With that said and done now, let's take a look at what transparency, translucency and opacity is. As you can see on screen, we're going to start with transparency. Transparency is just the property of a material to allow light to pass through it without affecting its direction. An object that possesses transparency is called a transparent object, meaning you can see through transparent objects. For example, in this picture we've got a glass cup here, or a wine glass if you might prefer to call it that. What you can see here is that you're able to see through such an object. And now the property of this object not affecting the light rays that pass through it is what we're terming as transparency. However, this object will be called a transparent object because it possesses transparency. This is a very important principle. Let's take a look at this picture that will pop up now. You can see that this is a car, right? Now, think about it. If objects were not transparent, such as the windows in this car, the driver couldn't see anything happening outside. And so transparency is actually something very important even in our daily lives. Not only that, you can even see in this clinical thermometer, because the object used in a thermometer, which is usually glass, someone who's taking a reading of temperature can easily see how the mercury has moved in the capillary. The other thing we'll look at is translucency. Translucency is just the property of a material to scatter light that passes through it. This is also a very important property. It's used in many, many areas. An object that has translucency will be termed as a translucent object. In this picture, a window made up of translucent glass is shown. As you can see, any objects we are seeing in this glass are blurred. 
they are bled because the light that passes through there is scattered and so when it gets scattered our eyes cannot really figure out a clear cut image in the hospital you find that most windows are translucent this is to create some kind of privacy another thing you should know about is opacity opacity is the property of a material to be impenetrable by light you should take note of this word it's very key impenetrable it's not impenetrable but impenetrable what this simply means is that objects that have this opacity will have that property to not make light pass through it in short it's impossible for light to pass through such objects and an object that shows opacity is called an opaque object it won't allow any light to pass through it things like wood are usually opaque the wall of your room most metals all these are examples of opaque objects now the pictures i've got here are somehow different from what you might have expected as you can see this is a person now what you must notice about opaque objects is that most opaque objects when exposed to light will cast a shadow and now this casting of a shadow is sometimes very important if you look in this picture here we've got these they are called sun visors these objects here are opaque and so they'll become very handy in such situations where there's light in front of the driver and so they'll cast a shadow that will block the light from really entering the eyes of this driver however they still leave a view from this point to this point for the driver to be able to see what's ahead now let's talk about rays and beams a ray is a line drawn to represent the path and direction in which light traveled sometimes this ray might even represent the path and direction in which light is traveling that is if the source of light you have continuously produces light that is traveling through that particular path what this means is we'll have a line and an arrow which will show the direction in which this light is moving now as we are getting an introduction to light something we should also note is how different rays will be used under light for example here let's say this object we have here is representing a mirror if a ray of light was introduced at a certain angle here this ray of light would bounce back like this here shown in the diagram and this is scientifically called reflection so what i want you to note is that rays are able to be reflected off some objects in this particular example our object that is reflecting the ray is a mirror we've looked at reflection and i'm sure you've gotten a picture about what it is reflection will be talked about in later videos another thing you should also note about is refraction refraction is the scientific name for the bending of light if we had a ray like this which came at a certain angle if this material is a glass block it will actually get bent or it will actually bend at a certain angle glass is transparent this ray will be able to come out of this object under refraction in other videos we'll talk about even more about this representation here but this is just a summary so a ray can bounce off some surfaces or get reflected and a ray can also get bent or can be bended with that said and done now let's look at beams when you hear the word beam what they're just referring to is a group of light rays emitted from a source of light now there are different kinds of beams that you should know from the onset when you're talking about light the first kind of beam is the parallel beam as you can see each light ray is parallel to each other and so these lines 
have no way in which they are going to meet each other. The next kind of beam is a divergent beam. To diverge means to simply get bigger. And so as you can see in this kind of beam, we had a smaller group of beams here which are getting bigger at the end. And this is why it will be called a divergent beam. The other kind of beams are just the opposite of divergent beams. From a bigger, they are going and concentrating on a point. And these are known as converging or convergent beams. With that said and done, we have roughly introduced light to you. But before we end this video, you are going to get some bonus tips. The first tip is about the rectilinear propagation of light. Well, if you tried to study a bit about light, obviously you came about this. The rectilinear propagation of light is just the property of light to travel in a straight line. Well, this can be handled in another way. If you want, you can try to look up the definition for rectilinear and propagation. You find that these two words just mean this definition the property of something to travel in a straight line. And now, you might be asking yourself or wondering, is this really true? Yes, actually, we can prove this and you can prove this actually from your home. You don't need the laboratory for you to do these experiments I'm going to talk about. What you can do is get outside on a sunny day. You will see that shadows will be casted and Try to get an object that you can turn around to make corners and you see that the light won't be able to travel around the corners. To prove that truly light will form shadows when an object is put to block the light rays that are formed by that source of light, what you can do is go out like I said on a sunny day, get an object that blocks part of the rays of light from the sun. And maybe hold this object close to a wall or maybe a screen. You can get a paper or anything that can help you see this shadow. This shadow actually represents that this object firstly is opaque. Now, what this also suggests is that the light rays that are coming from the sun are being blocked by this object and they are not able to pass through. And because light is traveling in a straight line, shadow be casted behind this object. In the second experiment, you can get an object which you can form corners with. At least you should make two or more corners for this experiment to make sense. When you get a pipe or any object that you can put in such a manner, what you do is get a light source. You can get a candle or a torch, switch it on, making sure the light start entering this path of yours. Then what you do is try to look at this other end. If you do this, you agree with me that truly you won't see any light from this end because the light only travels straight and ends up to this part. It doesn't turn to this part, come here and then gets visible to your eyes. It won't travel in a straight line and therefore it will end here. However, there are other appliances that you could use to make this light be visible to your eye. The next tip is about some terms you might find being used in light. Here is the table that shows the term and its meaning. For example, here we've got the word luminous. It means to give off light. This word will usually be used with object. And so when you hear the term luminous object, they're just referring to a certain object that gives off light. For example, a bulb is a luminous object. The sun is a luminous object. Non-luminous means something that's not able to emit light, but it's able to reflect it. For example, the moon is a non-luminous source of light. And from these two terms is another way of dividing the sources of light. They might also be divided as luminous sources of light and non-luminous sources of light. However, the concept behind is just about dividing and understanding that 
there are actually different kinds of sources of light. Next we've got the words incandescent, luminescent and bioluminescence. These are also very interesting. As you can see, incandescent means emitting light due to being heated. For example, a bulb that has got a filament is incandescent usually. Because of the heating of the filament, it produces light. While a luminescent source of light can be a fluorescent tube or most bulbs that come in form of a tube, usually they won't involve heating. It will be because of electrons traveling and similar facts. In the last row, we've got bioluminescence, which is the emission of light by living organisms. The most common example of bioluminescence is fireflies. In certain times of the year, you will see some flies which have lights in them. That is scientifically called bioluminescence. Thanks for reaching to the end of this video. Now, go and try out to see if you can prove the rectilinear propagation of light.